What is going on guys? It is your least favorite moto vlogger, Brian636, with your favorite installment, Hood Eats. Now, just like last Hood Eats, we have to do some maintenance on my bike before we get going here. But what makes this one a little bit more unique is this is the last little bit of maintenance that we get before this thing goes to Sturgis, uh, South Dakota and competes at the Bell Brawl. Now, we just changed the clutch on this 1200. With that being said, it is 100% time for an oil change. This is the only bike I own that I do not run the Rotella uh, T6. I actually run this VR1 uh, super heavy duty uh, 20W50 oil. But let's bang this one out quick because your boy is extra hungry today. And yes, I do run Lucas Stabilizer in the Harley as well. A few inches later. Gassing up, gassing up. All right, guys, what do you say? We got some fresh oil, some fresh gas. I think we are finally ready to start Hood Eats episode 25. 25, that's older than most of you guys watching, according to my analytics. Today, we are heading to the south side of Chicago to the neighborhood of Auburn Grisham. It's about an eight mile journey from where we are right now. Now, when I say I haven't eaten in the past 13, 14 hours, I'm not kidding. I am absolutely starving and it is the middle of the day. So let's go break in this new clutch real nice and easy. Put an emphasis on easy and let's go get some soul food. But let me tell you, how good does it feel to be back out on a hood eat, just talking, relaxing to you guys after this past like week, week and a half of real stress in my life. And for those of you that came out, for real, I appreciate it. And no, I don't really look at lean back like a stress. However, it definitely is a lot of uh, a lot of work. So just to be able to be just me and you and the camera by myself. And the first time in a long time, it feels really good. Also, let me know how my mic sounds down in the comments. Since I did just get a new helmet, uh, shout out to Bell Helmets. I, of course, had to redo not only my Lexan uh, and my GoPro, but also my microphone setup uh, for moto vlogging. So let me know how it sounds. Better, worse, the same. I can't tell a difference, Brian. Why are you even telling me about this? So right now, guys, we are in Auburn Grisham's neighbor to the north, Anglewood, as we are making our way further down south. I thought I'd give you guys a little glimpse into more than one neighborhood and kind of take some of the back streets on our way down there. Now, Anglewood this year, unfortunately, has moved up in spots now back to the most violent neighborhood in Chicago as far as 2020. And as a lot of you guys know that watch the news, there is federal agents swarming over here. They are here to truly take down a couple of the big gangs here and have been making more multiple gun arrests. And when I say the feds, I mean every three letter agency is pretty much within uh, the South Side right now, specifically around Englewood. And I've already made some really high profile arrests. The ATF has like their gun trace bus, like literally parked um, on 79th. Really is to just get all the guns off the streets. New clutch feels good. A little bit of do -si do As long as you're not dragging the clutch, I think uh, I think we're good. Hi. Hi. You want to try to rub it? Just go like this. Other way. There you go. <laughs> she likes that. <laughs> yeah. Have a good day, man. Every chance I get to interact with a kid and let him rev the bike, I have to. I can literally be the highlight of somebody's day. 69th, almost getting into Auburn Gresham now. But like I was saying, guys, this neighborhood truly is in a state of war and has once again, the first time in years, uh, started to pass up some of those uh, really violent West Side neighborhoods. Here we are, guys, on 74th, crossing under the railroad tracks. We are officially uh, exiting Englewood and entering into Auburn Gresham. Tell you what, this bike feels brand new with this clutch. I know I'm not, not a lot of you guys noticed it probably in my videos, but I was really having to yank up on the bike. 
quite a bit to get it up. Even more so, I'd just smell the clutch burning when I would go to drift or whatever. And now it's just, it's instant, it hooks. Auburn Grisham runs a stretch of the south side, uh, pretty much from 75th all the way down to 89th, and is a whole eight and a half miles away from the loop. Turn right here on 80th. Right here on 80th, what the hell? What the hell are you doing, lady? Yeah, you can only see this on Hood Eats. What the hell is going on? Whoa! What the hell are you doing out here? Huh? What do I want? I, I ain't need nothing. I'm just out here doing some wheelies. What do you need? Huh? Can I get, can you get a dollar? Yeah, I'll give you a dollar. Hey, you said a dollar. Now it's two. I'll give you a dollar. Thanks for the show. Yeah. Yeah. Man, I'm going to be demonetized over this. Well, that's a nice warm welcome to Auburn Grisham. What the hell is going on out here? It's noon. I haven't even eaten breakfast. Y'all got me out here doing burnouts around them saggy things? Definitely going to have to blur that out. Typical in a lot of these high crime neighborhoods, and I know I've discussed this before, we're on 83rd and Ada right now. Uh, that right there is a shot spotter, uh, and of course a police camera. But basically, these shot spotters, let me tell you about it because I haven't explained this in God, I don't know how long. You'll have one like that, they work uh, in threes. You can always spot them, they're literally like 30 feet tall, they're crazy tall. So if you have one, two, three, like a triangle, and a gunshot goes off right here in between uh, one and two. They both do the math, get the distance between them, and the third one does the math and gets the distance between that, and it sends off CPD, a grid, to exactly where those shots just went off. It's super cool uh, high-tech technology here that really does help our police be quicker to shooting scenes and hopefully, like I was talking about, get more of the guns off the street. So of course, without even having to be said, the 4th of July really does screw with our shot spotters here. Along with most guns being illegal here in Chicago, fireworks are all out illegal. However, we still have a bunch of fireworks going off like literally 24 hours a day. So I don't know how that really works since they're illegal. I don't, I don't get it. Hope you sense my sarcasm, YouTube. There's like the tiniest and smallest Maxwell Street I've ever seen. I'm only allowed to do Maxwell Street one time a year though. Do you know where this little soul food place is? Uh, I think Justina's soul food or something. Oh, thanks man. Jasmine's soul food on 87. She works good, huh? <laughs> yeah. It actually came as a comment, um, I think on episode like 16 or 17, I was just responding to random comments and I saw it and it had a lot of upvotes. So I called and made sure they're open because a lot of businesses out here are still recovering from the riots. And now we are gonna go get some of that amazing soul food. This is cool. This is Hood Eats material right here, ladies and gentlemen. Somehow I still got a crazy appetite, even after seeing them saggy old things. Man, there's a line too. That's how you know it's good. The soul food all lit up. Uh, I'll have, I'll have the ribs. Yeah. Could I have green beans and yams? That's a bulletproof glass on Hood Eats. Classic, classic. Do I get a pop with that too? So there's no pop? There's no water or none? Oh, beverages. How am I going to eat ribs with no drink? You have got to be kidding me. Ambition in the neighborhood that's full of regrets Maybe full of neglect, but we ain't missing the breath As we breaking down the history, I bet you get to questioning What food is the best, so we taking the test, yeah All right, guys, I'm about halfway done with my food here. Absolutely delicious. I see what the hype is about. However, the drink situation is not looking so good. I really don't like drinking disinfectant that much, but the hand sanitizer isn't too bad. I already, I already went through uh, one of these stacks of ribs. Absolutely amazing. Candy yams, super good. Um, comparable to something like uh, the licking, if you remember that, Hood Eats. Definitely tastes a lot like that. And the green beans, you can't really fuck up green beans. Come on now. 
but this sauce and these ribs are why people come here. It is amazing. A little bit more on the pricey side, but it is what it is. What kind I of butt? old bagger. That's nice. Yeah, so rock the titanium right. back here. Got the crash cage, uh -huh. 12 bar. Um, front Sorry, cage. You no, you're all good, man. I love talking about this thing. Now I get a chance to. I love talking to people with it. Are we break over here? Oh, yeah. No, so there's, you still have this. So okay. see, there's two calipers. This one's my foot brake. Okay. This one's my hand brake. So there's two of them on there. Yeah. Isn't that kind of bizarre? <laughs> I was still, I was staring at it the whole time I was standing. Yeah. That's yeah. All right, man. Take care and be safe. Hey, enjoy your meal, man. All right, thank you, too. All right, guys. Just got done with my amazing meal. It truly is soul food because I feel so amazing. And as I put my hat back out on my belt, I almost forgot. We just came out with two new designs on Misguided for hats. Uh, we got this black and gray one uh, that I love. It matches the Harley pretty well. And then we have a clean all black one that you guys have been asking for forever. As well as our lean back gloves all back in stock. So if you want to jump over there and help support the channel that way, uh, the link is down in the description. And also when I was sitting there, I remembered I haven't really talked about any of the statistics or history behind Auburn Grisham. So let me catch you up. See you later, Jasmine Soul Food. Thank you. Auburn Grisham was founded in 1850 when a couple of Dutch farmers set up shop down here. Slowly, uh, more Dutch, Polish, and Italian immigrants all began, began to settle here. 1889, the city of Chicago annexed the neighborhood of Auburn Grisham. Now what makes Auburn Grisham so different than all the other neighborhoods is you have these amazing bungalows and upkept block down here on the southwest side of the neighborhood. In the 1950s, as the freeway began uh, expanding and more African Americans were displaced out of the Black Belt, which was neighborhoods like Bronzeville, they began to push further south to neighborhoods like Auburn Grisham, Roseland, Grand Crossing. A lot of those neighborhoods had a pretty rough transition from white to black, except Auburn Grisham. Whites and blacks held the line against these territorial real estate agents that were blockbusting a lot of these neighborhoods. And what I mean by underselling the white family leaving and upselling the black family coming in. Holy crap, did this car get fucked up. Jesus, man, that thing ain't going nowhere. Because if you look at the history of Chicago, a lot of the times, whites and blacks were kind of pitted against each other and both were screwed over totally in the end by the whites selling their property for way under value and the incoming African-American getting screwed over by a house that was way overpriced. Auburn Grisham was definitely that exception. And it remained that way all the way up until the 70s and 80s as the outfit really began to flood some of the streets here with uh, crack and cocaine. The street gangs of Chicago begin to flourish down here. And a lot of the gangs and violence began to overflow from neighboring communities like Grand Crossing and Englewood right here to Auburn Gresham. And truly, the farther north you go in this community, the worse things really do th seem to get. There's a lot more abandoned buildings, boarded up homes. It's a direct reflection of a lot of that violence and drugs flowing into this neighborhood over the years. And residents, both black and white, fleeing this neighborhood because they didn't want any part of it. And of course, they probably don't want to raise their kids in that kind of environment. Now last year in this neighborhood, there was 122 people shot, 21 people murdered, and 101 people wounded here in the neighborhood of Auburn Grisham. This ranks this community the eighth most violent neighborhood here in Chicago, and this year it only seems to be going up. Guess I've really never explained these red X's either, huh? This means the building is uh, condemned. It's non-livable uh, by the city of Chicago. So whenever you see a boarded house or major apartment complex like one of these with red X's on it, that's what it means. Not all boarded up houses are condemned, but uh, all condemned houses are boarded up, if that makes sense. Do a crazy Larry. You're next. You ain't gonna do it. Uh, do a wheelie? You can wheelie it though, right? Huh? Get gas? Alright, let's go. Or just completely condemned apartment buildings. I'm going to get gas with my new friend here on his mini bike. You sure? Thanks, man. Them, them little things are hard to kill, man. Them little 212s. Oh, man, you hit something in the front end. Yeah, she bent. Yeah. Thanks, man. Shoot a throttle hand. Woo! 
All right, guys, I think we've had a pretty interesting hoodies today. I got to tell you about the neighborhood a little bit, even if it was in the second half of the video. We got to see some big old saggy yammies. To top it all off, we got to make a new friend on a mini bike there. But all in all, I would say this has been a pretty successful hoodie eats episode 25. Really do appreciate all you guys that have been here since the beginning of hoodie eats and all the guys that have caught up on hoodie eats along the past couple months here in quarantine where you got nothing else to do. So if you're new to the channel, please do hit the subscribe button. If you like my content, make sure to give it a big fat like. And please down in the comments, leave your suggestions for restaurants of where you want me to go next. Because I really do read them. As always, guys, this is your least favorite mortal vlogger, Brian636, signing out. I love y'all. Hope you're safe. Peace.